So, Sean, I wanted to start by asking you about what happens between the time when you have an idea, pick up a pencil, because I know you work with pencils, pick up a pencil and start drawing something. Um, that's a tough question on a Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a little coffee thing at Sunshine Station. It's a $50,000 pod. They're just as important as... You want me to shut up, do you? Your time's up. Oh, what? So <laughs> Already? <laughs> we no. just got started. <laughs> w would you also agree that you, you could be scary at times? Never. Never, OK. Well, that's a lie. So... <laughs> so... <laughs> so so w one observation, it's not a question, but you might like to comment. One observation is that what great clients do is they allow architects to be free to do what we do best. Bad clients, weak clients, scared clients interfere with that. Um, was there ever a point in this project, Naomi Milgram, where you interfered with it? Never. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Being brave and having courage and imagination is really important. I think it's um, important to show um, that you can do things together. Yeah, yeah. The risk, we're, now, now, we're, now we're patting each other on the back, but why the hell not, you know? <laughs> when we did the um, Museum of Sydney in, in Sydney, we commissioned a fantastic um, piece of sculpture by Fiona Foley and Janet Lawrence, which was called The Edge of Trees. Um, that sat in the forecourt of the, of the Museum of Sydney. And the, the story behind The Edge of Trees, which was a, a piece that was written, I think, i do not sure when, but about when the first Europeans landed um, in Australia, the traditional owners of the land were standing there in the edge, looking at them from the edge of the trees. And I suppose we took that, we, we kind of took that idea and thought about something that the, the site, the site sort of sits, so we can put, we actually push the building back into the, into the trees, and kind of felt that we, quite like the building to be something that was coming from, from Australia back to Europe, and and sitting in the edge of the trees, somewhat enigmatically, and and sort of looking out and letting people sort of wonder what the hell it was. I lived in Amsterdam for a couple of years, and um, Barcelona, and Kina lived in um, in Copenhagen. Those kind of places. There's really such a fantastic culture of of, um, you know, people living together in close proximity, in beautifully um, thought through, you know, public and, and private spaces. Leon, it's, it's, it's that real problem of, of ma man mandatory regulations, or I think, only bring the worst up to average, and they never contribute to... Um, great outcomes they don't contribute to that special that special thing about that the, the good design brings to it and, and, and I, I think it's how you push on from mandatory regulations to to um, aspirational good good outcomes and, and 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 it's not it's not about how big the apartment is it's how great the apartment is how what a fantastic piece of architecture it is the quality of the architecture yeah and how do we how do we yeah. that's the problem of how do we achieve that and I and I think council and people like that are stuck with 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 regulation as their means of, of doing it, mm. and that's not, that's not the way to make it. I think uh, anyone that works in design knows that uh, that design thing Design by of committee is always... Yeah, or <laughs> you can do whatever you like. Yeah. It's sort of the, too, too much the, freedom the hardest brief. And, so. and I am very interested in the way nationalism is inscribed yep. at World Expos um, and how it changes from time to time, and there are all those kind of incredible moments, but there's also these you know, um, more trivial moments in, in, in those things. And I, I guess what I'm interested in the World Pavilions is the way, um, the way we fill up the story of nationalism or these kind of conventional stories of nationalism and linear histories inside, inside those national pavilions. Can I, can yes. I just yes. Leon, can I pursue help. one thing a bit further? Because, I mean, there is this nervous boundary between art and architecture yes. and you're skating along the edge of it all the time. And I, I mean, I'm, I, t I hold the opposite view to Matthew Ward. I think the serpentine forces architects to do bad art. Mm. And it, it, it actually, removing programming means that you, 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 you empty the content out of the architecture completely and you're just there with yeah. the form. And one of the huge problems for the world at the moment is the way in which dictators of one sort or another are 
dropping large autonomous objects on their cities. And yeah, there is a kind of beauty in the, in the ordinary, I suppose, and the way they sit in the landscape was always kind of remarkable. And that's something I've always been interested in. If you stare at something long enough, you know, it starts to look beautiful. The whole reason that I'm, in, I'm interested in architecture is, is that it touches so many different realms of, of interest. So it's, it's, it, it seeps into literature, into poetry, into song, into music, into everything. It's omnivorous, it consumes everything. And then in, in, in very difficult moments it tries to crystallise that into something which simply stands there inert and is, is about all of those investigations in some obscure way and can be invaded and become part of other conversations. And the, the Aboriginal Australia is incredibly yeah. diverse in yep. itself as well and is in a mm. constant state of change as well anyway, yeah, you know, people, exactly. people make the mistake sometimes of sort of uh, thinking of us in a, in a sensualist sort of a yep. way, which is yeah. a serious mistake because it, yeah. you can't really talk about the Aboriginal experience or the Aboriginal opinion now, there's, there's 500 different mobs yeah. in Australia and um, coming from a multitude of different yeah. circumstances.